Amazon Cognito lets you customize user pool workflows with Lambda triggers. One powerful use case is using the pre-generation token trigger, you can add extra claims to the token like user data or custom data that your app requires. This means the ASP.NET application does not have to make additional user info endpoint calls to get details about the user or the additional data that it requires. In this video, we will see how to set up an Amazon Cognito pre-generation token trigger and use it in your ASP.NET application. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel where I talk about .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is part of my Amazon Cognito series and thanks to AWS for sponsoring it. In the previous videos in this series, we saw about the policy-based authorization framework in ASP.NET Core and we also learned how to set up OIDC scopes in Amazon Cognito. We added a custom age requirement class which also has a handler inside that and in this case we wanted the OIDC birth date claim. So we had to make an additional call to the user info endpoint on the OAuth to get the additional details. So anytime this requirement is being invoked, our application has to make an extra call to the user info endpoint to get these details. So let's see how we can get birth date into the access token so we can directly use it inside our application without having to call the user info endpoint. Amazon Cognito user pool lets you attach a Lambda function at multiple points in the sign-in, sign-up workflow. Each one is a separate hook into that flow, which you can customize using Lambda functions. Now, one of the things that we are interested in is the pre-token generation Lambda trigger. Now, this is invoked right before the token generation, which means we can influence the token that is being generated. Cognito supports different versions of the Lambda trigger and each of these versions has its own capabilities. Now with V1.0, the pre-token generation event, you can customize only the ID token. If you want to customize the access token, you need to be on the Essentials or Plus feature plan and using V2, you can modify the access token as well. Now the V3 is required for affecting the machine-to-machine -machine client grants flow. With the pre-generation token trigger, the request response looks something like this as shown in the documentation. It has a request and a response part and you will get also the claims and the important information that's attached to the token already. You can use this to then manipulate the response and add it inside there. Now this documentation talks about the version 1 and you can also see the version 2 and 3 which is what we will be using. So in this case the response requires an ID token generation and also an access token generation. You can explicitly override the claims to add or override. So if you want to change a value or add in a new value you can use this. Now in our case we want to add birth date which means we will be affecting the access token generation part of the response and under the claims to add or override we will be adding in the birth date. Now we will be already getting the birth date as part of the user attributes along with the request. Now this is a single object that comes into our Lambda function which we have to respond back by just modifying the response part. We can also see the various attributes that is there and the descriptions along with it. So let's switch over to Visual Studio and create our Lambda function to hook into the token trigger workflow and modify the claim. So let's come here and let's create a new Lambda project. Now, if you're completely new to AWS Lambda, I highly recommend checking out my series on this YouTube channel. Let's create an empty function and let's build our Lambda function from there. So here we have the Lambda function created and let's switch over to the function.cs, which is where we are going to specify our function code. I will copy and paste the function code that we are going to use and then walk you through the key bits. So let's replace this function handler with the function handler that I have already written. Now in this case, I'm using a JSON node to represent the request that's coming in and I'll respond back with the exact same JSON node. Now you can write a custom c -sharp class if required. However, I found this as easy a mechanism because you don't have to map all the unnecessary properties and create classes for that. Now, if you're doing advanced functionality with these request responses, I highly recommend creating a custom c -sharp class. To start with, I'm simply logging this line to show you what the request will be. Otherwise, I would be ignoring this. Now, once we have the JSON node, what we need is to modify the response. So let's get the response object, add in the claims and scope 
override details and specify access token generation. So we are creating these different objects inside this and assigning it to the response. So this is exactly the structure that we just saw in the documentation where we were setting up the claims and scope override details, the access token generation and claims to add or override. So once all these is set, we are setting up the birth date which is coming from the event request user attributes. We are checking using a question mark to check if that attribute exists. If not, it will be empty. Now, once we get the birth date, we are simply adding into the access token generation, the claims to override section. And we are adding in a birth date property with the appropriate value. Once we have modified the response, we can respond back the entire event that we are receiving in so that Amazon Cognito will start using this claims to override it. Now, let's deploy this to our AWS console so that we can hook this up into our Cognito workflow. So, let's right click and say publish to Lambda. Let's give this Lambda function a name. So let's call this as Cognito Token Generation and let's click Next. This Lambda function needs a role. So let's specify the Lambda basic execution role and click Upload. This is going to upload this Lambda function into my AWS account. I have set up the AWS toolkit and also set up the local account so that this is working. In a real world application, you will be setting up a build deploy pipeline. I have those videos in my Lambda series. So let's switch over to our AWS console. Let's navigate to a new tab and let's go to AWS Lambda to see our new Lambda function. Inside here, we have the Cognito token generation function, which is what we will use to hook our Cognito user flows. So let's navigate back to the AWS and let's go to Cognito and go to our user pool that we used in our previous videos. So here we already have the app client set up and we have to now add in an extension which is where we specify the Lambda triggers. So let's create a new Lambda trigger. In this case, we need something that affects the authentication and we are having a pre-token generation trigger. Now, this also asks for the version that you're going to use. Now, in this case, since we are going to use the access token customization, let's just select that. Now, we can select the Lambda function, which we already have, which is the Cognito token generation. Now, if you want to create a completely new Lambda function, you can also do that from here. However, since we have one already created, we're just selecting that. Now, once we add the Lambda trigger, it's going to add the required permissions to invoke Lambda function. So let's click this Add Lambda trigger, which is going to do that inside our Lambda function. So if we go into Configuration, Permissions, you can see here we have added a resource-based policy statement. So this is allowing Cognito to make an invoke function on this Lambda function. Now, once this is all set up, let's navigate back to our app client. Let's go to our web app client that we already have and let's view login page and login to this. So I have the username and password already created for this account. So let's log in, which redirects to our getting a code. So let's copy this code and let's exchange this for a token. We use Postman for this and I walk you through all of these in the previous videos in the series. So let's click send, which is going to exchange this code for a new token. Now, if we switch back to our Lambda function and go to the monitoring in here, we can see the CloudWatch logs for this specific Lambda function. Let's see the view CloudWatch logs. Here, this has a log stream and a log group written in here. So you can see the request that's coming in here, which says the incoming event. And you can see the entire request in here. So you can see the request contains the user attributes, the birth date, group configurations, etc. It also specifies the full token info and the response is an empty object. This is what we updated in our code and returned back. So now if we switch back to Postman, let's copy this access token and paste this into jwt.io and you can see the claims as part of this access token. Now earlier we didn't have the birth date. However, you can see right now we have the birth date inside our access token. This is because our pre-generation Lambda trigger has accessed the token and modified it and inserted this new claim. Now you can copy any of the attributes that you want from the ID token or that is available in the request and you can make it available inside your access token. Now that we have this birth date inside our access token, we can switch back to our application. Let's navigate to the HTTP file. Let's paste in the token so that we can start using this. 
Let's paste the token in here and let's invoke the post request. Let's paste this token. Now let's modify our application code to start using the claims attribute from this token rather than using it from the user info endpoint. So let's navigate back to our age requirement handler. Inside here previously, we were making a call to get the user birthday async. We were making a call to user info. Now instead of this, we can completely comment this out and we can specify where birthday claim we can use the context dot user and we can get the claim from here so we can specify the find first and pass in the claim type that we require so in this case we are requiring for the claim types and we can use the enumeration which specifies the property birth date which is date of birth in this case so we are getting the first claim which is the date of birth we can get the actual value for this, which returns us the birthday claim. Once we have the birthday claim, we can get the birth date by passing the value. So let's specify date time dot try pass, and we can specify the value that we have, which in this case is the birth date claim, and we can specify the output variable to capture this into. So let's specify out where date time, and let's specify this as birthday, which is what we were already using. Let's specify the out variable and capture this as part of the birth date property. So let's just simply specify that. And we can use this whole thing inside the if loop because that's already doing the try pass. If it is false, it will just return. So now we have the birth date, which we can use to calculate the age. Since this is no longer nullable, we can directly use the birth date value. So we've completely removed the user info call and we are directly getting the value from the token. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's run this application. The application is running, so let's switch over to our .http file. Let's invoke the HTTP request by clicking the send request, which hits our endpoint. And here we can see the context.user has the claims, and we can expand this to see the birth date claim. So here we have the value, and we have it as part of the birth date claim. Now, if we step over this, you can see this is going to try pass, get the value for birth date, and it's calculating the age. And in this case, it is 24, which is not greater than the minimum required age. So this is going to fail this, and it's going to return an error. So if we switch over to the output window, now this specific request timed out because we hold on to it for a long time. So let's continue the execution. And in the HTTP, you can see this is 403 forbidden. Now, if we switch the rules or change the token to have a valid user with an age that is greater than 40, we will be able to hit this endpoint. So to see this working, let's come back to our program.cs and let's change this rule back. So instead of over 40 only, let's specify over 18. Let's also update the policy definition. So let's scroll up and instead of over 40, let's specify over 18 and pass in 18 as the required age. Now let's run this again and let's hit our HTTP endpoint once more by clicking the send request. Now in this case, since the user is greater than of the age that we require, this is going to return a 200 OK and execute the API code. If we put breakpoint inside our actual API endpoint, you will see this is also getting hit. So let's put a breakpoint here and let's invoke this request for one more time. And this birthday claim is checked and we are hitting the API endpoint and we are executing the controller logic. In a future video, I'll show you how to enable custom attributes in Amazon Cognito and also start using it from your .NET application. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.